haven't talked about COVID much, which is fine, but I do want to ask, how has COVID-19 really affected your season from the past year? Uh, whether it be just the entire marching band, your section. Um, I want to hear the good, the bad, the ugly. But um, of course, you know, if you don't want to get too much into it, that's fine. A lot of people don't want to move forward. So um, you can choose to discuss it as much or as little as you'd like. Obviously, it was a huge shift. Um, we completely didn't have a football season. Uh, we didn't have any games that we could play at. And so for our marching band, we rehearsed Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three to five. And so normally that would be on our practice field together as a band or inside rehearsing music as a band. But we decided, our director, about a week before band camp was supposed to start, he decided that we aren't going to have band camp. We're not going to meet as a full band this semester at all. And that was kind of a scary thought. Um, he put out an email to the section leaders that was like, we are going to um, rehearse as sections only. And so that meant that Monday, <laughs> Wednesday, Friday, three to five, you're going to have only sectionals on different parts outside around campus. And so as a section leader, like, you had to run rehearsal for six hours a week. And that was a lot of trust put on us. And I think it turned out really, really well for everything. So we rehearsed outside and the trumpet section had 16 members. And so we rehearsed in a giant circle, six feet apart come with bell covers on and rehearsed all of our songs by ourselves. We had no idea what the tubas were playing. They were on the other side of the building and we couldn't hear them but we had no idea what drumline sounded like or the, any of the woodwinds. So we were just playing it to a metronome and then to put it all together and show our final product, our director came around and videoed everybody to, you know, click track. And then he sliced them all together, like what we're doing here, you know? So that was the entire marching band experience. And so, you know, the trumpet section as a whole, we had a great time by ourselves but it was hard to not have the rest of the band to feed off of or know what they sound like. So it was really interesting, but the product was much better than I think we all expected and it worked out. Uh, pretty similar to Caitlin, um, definitely there were a lot of limitations that had happened. Um, we weren't able to meet as a full band, but we had, um, it was like 50% of the band. We were able to meet and do physically distant rehearsals. Um, we did a couple, um, cause we had to, uh, right. You know, you have, we were abiding by all the protocols and safety measures put in place by Pennsylvania, by the university of Pittsburgh. Um, so we had a couple physically distant rehearsals when we were able to. Um, and then we had the opportunity to go to two home game performances at Heinz Field, um, limited um, to just the stands that we did, just music from the stands spread out six feet apart. Um, definitely was different and not the same for sure. All those traditions that we all love to do um, didn't happen, but I was really thankful for those opportunities. And, you know, in the down times too, when uh, we weren't able to meet or, you know, earlier on during the pandemic and during the semester, um, we kind of sat down and wanted to think of new ways to meet together. And obviously that led to more Zoom meetings like we're doing now. Um, so we created a couple alumni speaker series and we would have like a once a week Zoom call with the entire band, which was really, really awesome. Um, we had some virtual marching band techniques for the freshmen, tech, like some seminars for them to just learn a little bit of the things they could do because um, they never saw the field. Um, and we brought in some some uh, guest speakers from local orchestras and symphonies and um, other band directors in the ACC, which is a lot of fun. Um, and we also had, we really wanted to be on the forefront of some new diversity and inclusion initiatives um, throughout the sem semester. So we started those on Zoom, which was, it was really awesome. Um, we uh, formed an activism committee within the marching band, um, which they've been doing really amazing work. And um, we actually 
um, all, all the marching band students were able to participate in um, diversity consciousness awareness sessions um, with the University of Pitt Pittsburgh Athletic Department. Um, and we also had a guest speaker from an alumni in um, from the band from who was who was a uh, band member in the 1950s who shared some really amazing stories um, when the band really faced some outside adversity in that era and what they did to um, really unite each other and to support each other regardless of background it was um, it was a moving zoom call um, and I think that was one of my favorite um, moments. Um, Frank Weiss was the alumni who got to share his story. Um, and it was really amazing to be um, to hear his story and know that like we've been part of a family and group that cares about things that are important and to, to be um, diverse, to be inclusive was, uh, was really awesome to listen to. Yeah, so um, in the beginning of the season, we usually have you know, aside from COVID, we would usually have summer band where we all meet up a week before the actual semester starts. And then we would just have rehearsals from early in the morning to late in the afternoon. Um, of course, this year that couldn't happen. So as a result, we replaced summer band with a thing called Zoom Brigade that, you know, we kind of coined the term based off the actual band's name, Green Brigade. So. Um, in Zoom Brigade, it was the same schedule as Summer Band. We would meet Monday through Friday through Zoom, and we would have like, um, you know, visual stuff, just like practicing, you know, marching forward, backward, side to side, just different fundamentals that were visual. And we did the best that we could, especially considering most people were in their rooms and the space limitations were definitely present. Yeah. But um, after that, we would have, we would have um, like the sectional block for each section. And it would just be section leaders and squad leaders talking, just going through different stand tunes and, um, you know, show repertoire that we would just, we would play later on, but we would practice as a group through Zoom. That's cool. And it was definitely, it was definitely different. I mean, as a result, it worked. I mean, I can't, I can't like, you know, not give it that. It definitely worked as a result. And when we actually were able to meet for the full season, when the semester started, uh, we had a lot of different procedures. Like, okay, different sections would enter different gates of the stadium because we would rehearse in our stadium, Apogee Stadium. And different sections would enter different gates. Um, we'd all have different sections of the bleachers and stands that each section would be in. And typically we'd warm up like section by section in the stands. Then we'd go onto the field and start practicing fundamentals or show stuff. But um, one of the most challenging things that I'm pretty sure every single member faced was drill. And we had drill, which I was really shocked because I didn't think it would even be possible considering we were a 200 person plus band. And like, I just didn't think it would happen. But we had drill that was socially distanced and each member we had face masks with like little slits in them that we would just like kind of slide our mouthpiece in. And um, we'd also have bell covers. So we were definitely like prepared and we were we were probably the safest group on campus, which is ironic considering we're the biggest group on campus. So right. yeah. And whenever we practiced drill, we would we would usually do set by set. So like go from page zero to page one, and then we would rep that a couple times. And whenever we would go back to our original spot we would turn around, get taps off, tap offs from the drums, and then just march with the same count structure back to our spots. And it was, it was weird, but like, I, I have to give it credit. It worked so well. And I'm glad to say that we had a season that even though the circumstances would have originally prevented it. I'm glad to hear that 
everyone, uh, a lot of us had uh, the opportunity in our bands to uh, still come together in any ways that we could this past year. Uh, same with uh, my school, Grand Valley. Uh, I was, I think we were really fortunate because our, uh, my university did a really good job uh, to, uh, to begin with, with um, the whole, uh, the whole student population and communities um, and keeping everyone uh, in the know, monitoring everything. Um, and for the band, we, over the summer, we were looking at um, the, we were looking at the preliminary aerosol, the performing arts yeah, we were looking at the pre preliminary uh, performing arts aerosol studies by the CPDNA and FH NFHS because um, those kind of came out with the guidelines um, as they were coming out. And um, we called it like the COVID response committee and our band director hosted these meetings over the summer and wanted to include everyone and made them open. Um, and then we came up with a COVID response plan for the season, which we didn't end up having football. That was heartbreaking right before we were going to try to have band camp, sort of. Um, so we were very lucky because we ended up still doing a couple of performances. We started off with doing what we are planning to do, uh, whatever we could, trying to do like six shows for six um, football games. And um, it ended up being two of them. There were a few hiccups with um, like at one point, uh, we had to stop meeting for two weeks for everyone to quarantine, and then we got to continue meeting after those two or so weeks actually, um, just until October. So no football until November, December, and March until then. But um, it, we were very, very fortunate, and um, I would have to thank. Uh, like, uh, I'm very proud of my whole band because, like, from the university and the music department to uh, our band's leadership to every single member of our band. Um, everyone did come together, uh, talk, figure it out, and um, we were able to successfully have a uh, partial season and, um, and just do two performances actually. But uh, uh, I have to say I learned a lot from it going forward. So Conference USA voted to play football but sideline the bands, so I really, really, really am grateful for our director for still aiming to provide a live and gratifying experience taken directly from the email that we sent to all the members that we wanted to provide a live and gratifying experience anyway. And it was a logistical game the whole season. And I feel that no matter how much adversity and challenges that we have faced with how we're planning rehearsals all the way to game days and our band is huge there's no way we could have gotten the whole band in the stands so there's something that i started calling stand sorcery we split the we split the band into two so every other game one pep band would have an opportunity to play one of the pep bands was around 190 something people the other band was around 170 and they were socially distanced with a hypotenuse of six feet within with, between each member you can tell i'm really passionate about this so yeah, they were space. <laughs> they were doing well. They did great. And it was a learning curve to try to figure that out. But it was really, really gratifying to see how the students felt empowered throughout the entire season. That was every single member. It gave opportunity for section leaders to make lesson plans and have everything set for musical sectionals. We had 30 minutes blocked off every other day for them to teach the music, then full ensemble rehearsals. The field technicians and field staff throughout the Zoom Brigade process also learn how to teach marching concepts and make lesson plans, get them approved by our director. And the student assistant staff definitely learn how to prioritize logistical responsibilities and to still empower everyone else around them. So even though we did face a lot of challenges, it was really, really, really great that we were able to expand on our musical repertoire through a bunch of recording projects. Some of the, most of the band had never been part of a recording project ever, but we were able to do three of them, produce videos, and they're all up on our social media channels and everything. So we were able to musically grow and grow more camaraderie than we have in years past, even though physical distance prevented us. And I'm so proud of the group for that. Sadly, we no longer have 4 a.m. practices. So that was a bummer, but on another note, um, the, the, the conference I'm in at Western, the Mid-American Conference said in August, no football. And we're like, and I, obviously that's a big heartbreak for me and the rest of the band. And our, and our band director, Dr. Trey Harris, he's like, well, if you we don't have football, we're still gonna do band in all these different ways. We didn't have our usual band camp, but um, he, 
he, um, he took a survey who's comfortable with doing in person, who's not, and those who were comfortable with doing in person split into two bands, about 80 in each one, and they met once a week. I was in Monday band, we had a Wednesday band. Every Tuesday we had a Zoom call with everyone. That was always fun. He brought in guest speakers from other universities he'd been at. He brought in other people from our university, Western Michigan, to talk about obviously diversity and inclusion, music, breathing, technique, all this other stuff. And then a lot of our GAs and senior staff did presentations as well. Then we also had once weekly sectionals. The two was always met on Thursdays. We'd go down to the field and, and work through music. Um, and then come, come around October, the Mac said, oops, we're gonna do football now. And that threw a big curveball at us because we're like, so what does that mean for us? It was, it was only a six game slate. We only had three home games. And our director was fighting so hard for us to get into a home game. He wanted to get us all into one. The university said yes, football said yes, athletics said yes. And then that, that's when a lot more of the, 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 the cases started rising again in Michigan. And the, and the human service or health and human services department at, in Michigan said, nope, sorry, not, not this year. And th that was upsetting, but um, I feel like I got way closer with the sec just my section, because that's mainly what you were doing was just your section work. And obviously it's, it's, it's unfortunate I didn't get to get as close with everyone else in the band, but it was still nice to see X number of people once a week and still be in a Zoom call with them. But yeah, and another bummer, it was supposed to be our 100th season. Oh no. This was supposed to be season 100 for the Bronco band. Oh and no. And unfortunately that was all pushed back. And that was a big bummer because we had tons of stuff planned. But next year is going to be season 100 re <laughs> revised. Yeah. And our, our director joked and said, oh, this is season 99 and a half. This isn't yeah. season 100 yet. So I'm looking forward to that next year. So um, I can't thank you all enough for your time. I can't wait to hear you and I'll be looking for your square and, um, you know, just continue to represent yourself and your universities and colleges like you are. It's amazing to hear these stories and um, share this morning with you or afternoon. If it's already afternoon for you. But um, again, it was so nice to meet all of you and um, I'm glad we got to chat and I hope that you all have a fantastic rest of your day. So looking forward to more.